Oh, it came out today and decided instead of to go right at it with the impact driver to just try this uh, this large bit that I have, which is a socket bit, and then I've got this T handle, and that did the trick that allowed me to uh, break this free. So now I can unscrew this. All right, so I've got all the screws out except for this one, which I left in and I just loosened because I want to. I don't want this thing to just fall out. Uh, so it's really stuck in there, probably from being in there so long, and also the fact that it's painted in, although that paint line's starting to crack all around. So oh, not on this side though. Oh, actually, oh, okay, I see this. This actually ends right here, so it's that line right there. Um, but I think the easiest way to take this out or get that loose is going to be just come from this side. You actually see this top lever right here. What this top lever does is it actually rotates that little gear in there and it moves this sleeve back and forth and decides which gears are going to be engaged. So that's kind of neat how that works. And then when it's in position, because of the design of that gear, it allows this to still turn freely. So that shaft right there is actually the uh, the back of this shaft right here. So if I gently tap on that I should be able to pop this out all right I'm definitely getting some separation here so I've taken out that last screw and I'm gonna put my uh, chain hook on there to uh, keep it from just falling out well it's not coming easily so I'm uh, I decided to take off this handle it's basically a cap and a spring and a screw this handle was spring loaded so you could pull it out to unlock it and get it into whatever detent you want here just in case this lever is supposed to stay behind and that's what's holding it up well something's not letting this thing come off and I'm thinking now it might actually be something to do with this handle only because now this handle doesn't want to move it's almost like I'm putting too much tension on it I can see the shaft going in there and I'm thinking maybe that's gonna stay behind when you take this plate off not positive but it's the only handle that these all just have pins through them to hold them on. This is just a screw. That one seems to move perfectly fine, so I don't think that's the culprit. This one's just gonna pin through it, but I know where that goes, and that, that should be free. Uh, so, but this one's got this plate with three Allen screws. Well, had my lunch. Always feel better after having lunch. Anyways, uh, took this cover off the side here, and. Now I can see inside the unit, see the gears. This is interesting. What do we got here? This is uh, some wire that was tied in here. And it looks like that is, huh. Looks like maybe that piece is broken. The top cap piece there is broken. And that must have been, let's see what was that for? Oops. Oh, it's just my crowbar falling down. Huh. Well, that must turn. Must be what this lever turns. Must be what this lever turns, maybe? <laughs> Don't know. Ah, okay. So I just took these three Allen head screws out, pulled out on this thing, and when I pulled out on this thing, I heard something fall down. And lo and behold, I could see looks like what fell down is the gear that was on here there was a gear right there that was meshing with that and now it's gone how did that fall down too should be right down here on the ground right uh, worry about that in a bit uh, looks like there was a key in there that's also missing so now I wonder if that means that I can pull that whole shaft right on out yep oh okay maybe now I can take this whole side off aha another clue as to why this isn't coming out when I pry on this you see how it's wiggling that whole pulley right there? 
you can just kind of see it. So that means that when I'm pulling out on this, this whole shaft that goes into here is being pulled on. Maybe it goes through a piece. So maybe this shaft has to be removed before this can be taken off. All right, I just removed a little spring wire clip that was in this groove, but then the bottom of it actually bent up at 90 degrees and went up through a tiny hole in here, which I think the purpose of it is to lock this strange, this is like a nut. You can actually see there's threads on this. So this must need a spanner wrench to take that off, but we'll just see if we can't tap it off by putting the screwdriver in there and tapping. Yeah, it was pretty easy, and then that practically unscrewed by hand, and then a little bit of tapping on the back of this uh, pulley, and was able to get the bearing to come off, and then there was like another, like, uh, part. I'm not sure what that was, but big spacer that was on there. Got that off, and now I think if I use both hands, I can actually wiggle and slide this whole pulley right off. Oh, now that, uh, after sliding that off, you can see there's just uh, this like drum, uh, part of the clutch mechanism there. Let's see if that just slides off now too. Not sure how this comes off, but I do see some, this plate, screws I can take out, and there's a pin here. I think it goes down to that, so maybe this has something to do with disassembling this, so we'll take that plate off. Oh, that didn't seem to do much for me, and then I noticed that it seems like this whole thing would slide out if the inner part there was not engaged by this shifting fork uh, and there's a bolt right here that it pivots on so that can be removed and then it looks like there's a pin right here that attaches it to the rod the control rod that goes up to where that lever is uh, basically you turn that lever to engage the clutch and it moves this rod in the back here in and out And here you can see after I drove the pin out that went down the, through the bottom part here and uh, took the bolt out. That was the pivot point for this part. And then I can just pull the whole thing and it slides out and it takes this. Looks like that's a big bushing or something that took, came out of that sleeve right there. Now it looks like there's four screws in here that hold this assembly on and what's interesting is uh, a couple of them are really loose. Matter of fact all of them look pretty loose. Alright so those four screws remove this whole part which is also the bearing uh, carrier and once the bearing carrier is out of the way then this whole shaft just slides right out. So this whole back shaft is one piece well, that looks like that's pinned on the end of it, but in other words, this shaft comes off. And that, of course, is what was keeping this from coming out now. I can see that as I would pull that out, that shaft was hitting here. So now this whole thing on the side here should come out. That's another one of these puppies that's a lot heavier than it looks. Because <laughs> it's coming out and it's taking all of those gears with it. So you can see that's a big deal there. So I put my hook back on it there and hopefully that'll arrest its fall some. Uh, what did I do with that crowbar? <laughs> Gotta put the camera down to do this. Yeah, I'll tell you what, do not attempt to pull that out of your machine unless you've got something supporting it helping you from overhead that's a heavy unit and not easy to get out you've got to move it the trick is once you get this all out you've got to move it back towards that way so that this front part over here which is the sprocket gear that drives that chain uh, is cleared. Now you remember on my machine, or this machine I should say, <laughs> this machine the uh, drive was not being driven by this for some reason. Something is something was broken in this from 
I was led to understand the heirs of the estate told me that one of the reasons why he got this machine for probably next to nothing was because the uh, it, the transmission had this problem and so he had to put that whole auxiliary motor on at least that's the story and now that we've got this out it was clear he never had this apart so but now that we have this out I wonder if we can see why this might not have worked now this drive shaft right here well that makes no sense at all this is the this is the drive that I just took off down here. That's driven by the pulley. So that sprocket was directly driven. So there's no reason that I can see why he couldn't have that chain driven off of this. Huh, that's very strange to me why he would have done that. There's no teeth broken off that sprocket. Well, and then, of course, this is all the gears up here that get selected by, depending on what position you put those different, uh, different levers in. So, looking, just a quick cursory look at these gears. I do not see any teeth missing in that one. I don't see any teeth missing in that one. I don't see any teeth missing in that one. We know this one's good, because that just moves that piece back and forth. And this one looks good too. There's a gear back in there I can't really see, but that's meshing with that one, and that one seems fine. Hmm. Can't see anything wrong with that unit. All right, so now we got that out. All we have left now is the whole spindle assembly deal here, which is, uh, oh yeah, on that uh, almost like a back gear shaft. This one here, this counter shaft. All right, the counter shaft. Oh, that's cool. You can see that this is rotating at a different speed than that. So what engages this thing that just did that? It must be a lever. Well, it must be this lever. No, no. Not sure how that works. It's kind of neat though. I'm looking from the underside here. Not sure what actuates that. How this is supposed to engage. See this hole right here? I think there's supposed to be a pin that goes down in there. Not sure exactly how that was actuated, but I think there was a pin that went down in there that had teeth on it and operated a uh, sector gear in there and rotated this, and that in turn would make that. See, that's fully disengaged, but then if I rotate this back to this position like this, whoop. Doesn't want to go in that direction. It keeps wanting to. There we go. Put this back like this. All right, go ahead. Make a liar out of me. Oh, okay. I didn't have it over far enough, I guess. But if I if I could turn this so it meshed while I was. There we go. That's engaged. See. What a neat piece of engineering. No, taking this out might be more work than it's worth. I don't have anybody who's looking for this at the moment. Oh, wait a minute. That just, oh, I see that moves out. There. Oh, now I locked it up. What I did was I took this screw out that actually engages the slot, the special screw that disengages this from that. And then I took out these three very long screws that actually go through this whole thing and hold this plate on. Uh, 
and none of that's doing anything for me as far as getting this off of here because it's a long shaft that goes right through it and I can't tell there was a screw somewhere in here that went in I took out that looked almost like a set screw that might hold something in there I don't know I don't know whether or not I can just drive this shaft out now or whether or not these are weird like need some kind of spanner wrench maybe to turn these things on the end here you can see that but there's like two holes opposite each other well son's got a baseball game so I gotta quit so I have enough time to go wash up and get all this grease off of me and change up for the game so I'm gonna have to quit today but I don't know I'm thinking that there's got to be some special tool that's supposed to maybe engage those two holes and unscrew this and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that out. I just tried putting a pipe wrench, but there's not enough of a lip on here to grab onto. And I tried putting something sharp in one of the holes and tapping it to see if I could get it to start to rotate, and that didn't work either. But that sure to me looks like uh, that's how that's put together.